few different foods that uh, that really will create inflammation even on a carnivore style diet so i get uh, i guess most informed by this on something called the six food elimination diet so there's an autoimmune condition called eosinophilic esophagitis mm -hmm. which is sort of a prototypical uh, autoimmune disease that affects the gastrointestinal tract but it's very easy to study because we can just whack a camera down your mouth and have a look at the esophagus and we can do biopsies and samples on it. So they've actually what we call histological remission of this disease where they actually cut a bit of the tissue out, look at it under a microscope and say, oh, those inflammatory cells have disappeared. So they've actually, uh, through empirical, basically trial and error research, found that there's six different food types that will predominantly trigger eosinophilic esophagitis. And the study which I refer most commonly to showed that when people simply eliminate those six foods from their diet with this proven disease, about 73% of them will induce and maintain a prolonged histological remission, which is pretty impressive. Those six foods, though, include things that carnivores commonly consume. So milk is there. So nuts and seeds is also there. And people often forget that coffee is a seed. Mm -hmm. Coffee will absolutely trigger those reactions. And the third one is fish and seafood which really blows a lot of people's minds. Now, we actually personally add pork to that list as well for a lot of people. So we talked about cross-reactivity before, and there's a lot of people with cat dander allergies and animal danders, and for some reason there seems to be something about pork meat that leads to a cross-reaction with some of the animal danders. If I'm noticing people are still particularly inflamed, even on a carnivore-style diet, the things that we'll look at in terms of hierarchy will be dairy, coffee, fish, seafood, also eggs. I forgot to add eggs to the list, and this is another one that people are often very surprised about. But when you think about eating eggs in nature is not something that we're habitually able to do. It's not that common that you come across eggs in nature, and if you do, if we did too much of it, would just drive species to extinction. So these aren't things that we're necessarily attuned to eating for long periods of time. So if you, unfortunately, you're taking dairy, milk, fish, seafood, eggs, coffee out of a diet for a lot of carnivores, I'll say, holy crap, that's most of what I'm eating. But I think if you understand that they can provoke inflammation about the, I had this conversation I recall with you several years ago and you asked me, we were doing these food print IgG food tests where we're actually looking for evidence of antibody reactivity to the different antigens of food. And you said to me that you're in contact with somebody in England who would be supervised several thousand of them and about the only food that they'd reliably identified that did not cause an autoimmune or have potential for autoimmune reactivity was red meat. And I, I have to agree, that's been my clinical experience from the food print testing as well. And the more I've delved into this other research, it's only been substantiated. Yeah, it seems to be the safest. It's not that other people can't include eggs or dairy. There's plenty of people that, that still are able to tolerate that. But when you're figuring out what that last step is a lot of times removing those things is very very helpful let's go back to the obviously oh, hang on, just on that one sorry sean i go ahead paul yeah i think what you just raised a really important point that we need to talk about historically we've always put people on single food elimination diets we said we'll work out what's wrong with you just cut out these foods one at a time and we'll see which ones you respond the best to the problem is, so in this six food elimination diet study on eosinophilic esophagitis, they found that a third of people were reactive to at least three different types of foods. And about another third were reactive to at least two different types of foods. So what that means is that more than half the people have multiple reactivities. So if you just remove one item from the diet, you're still consuming something that's inflammatory, problematic, and probably consuming it in a greater quantity. So that's why a single food elimination diet theoretically cannot work for most people in this situation. The only way to do it should be a complete elimination and a single food reintroduction, because you're absolutely correct. That doesn't mean that everybody can't eat eggs. It's only certain people. This is not an ideology. We're trying to be factual and scientific about this. And the simple reason is, why would you exclude these foods or exclude plants from your diet if you didn't need to? 
it's only for people who actually have a genuine reason to do it. And it's not ideology. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's a fair point, Paul. 